Imagine seeing the streets of the UAE crowded with classic cars like these and run an electric. Meet Salman and Mihai, the co-founders of the first startup in the MENA region that converts classic cars into electric vehicles. So the plan of Fuse as a scale-up was always to be able to address you know, a mass market where people really need electric vehicles but they maybe can't afford them or they're out of reach. What we're developing as kits are to decarbonize exactly those vehicles that people use all across the world but don't have any electric options for. I was born in the 80s in India, Hyderabad. My family actually ended up moving us here in the late 90s because my dad wanted to expand his business, so we're kind of like second-gen citizens here. And I um, had a brief stint you know, out in Europe uh, where I did my bachelor's and master's degree. We used to have this really, really tiny car called the G-Wiz, which is an Indian-based car. And seeing them ply around London, you know, way, this is way before Tesla, it was fascinating to see these very slow, very odd-looking cars, but like very relevant, it felt like. And of course, around that time, I also saw the rise of Tesla, you know, the, the Roadster and the 200 mile range. And I was like, all right, so they're making some progress. And there is this kind of sentiment that this can really go somewhere. So by the time I had come back here in 2012, I saw the Model S being put down on the roads and everybody was buying it then. Um, I thought, you know what, I think this is going to be quite relevant as we go into the future. And then obviously now, uh, that set the stage for us, you know, wanting to address mobility from a different side, which is, it's great for passenger cars now, but what are we going to do about all the other types of transport that we need to decarbonize? Well, uh, I came to Dubai around 10 years ago, 11 years ago, something like that. And uh, Salman was one of the first uh, person that I met. Actually, <laughs> I remember that meeting that we had at that time. It was just a casual meeting for uh, a coffee or something. And uh, he, sta uh, he told me, hey, I want to, do, uh, I want to convert an, uh, an old Beetle to electric. And I wa was like, you want to do what? And immediately my brain started, bam, bam, bam. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> and of course, uh, I said, hey, I want in. We'll do it, of course. <laughs> and as, I, as he said, once it was done, we had a very good reception from people on the road and everybody was like, oh, oh what is this? And from the events that we went. And uh, from there, I said, okay, we can do this. We can change the world. <laughs> so if you want to convert a car, that is, uh, let's say, more recent, a lot more research needs to go into that and a lot more development, and that increases the cost. Of course, it not, does not cost as much as a new car, but it's still a considerable um, uh, price because you have batteries that uh, are expensive, you have motor, and you have other new components that go into a car. People that have classic cars, they uh, face some challenges. For example, they can't find the parts or uh, uh, the car always breaks down, but they still love their car. They want to bring their identity to the, to the road. So this is a very good um, opportunity to give a new soul to the car. When you look at, you know, classic car regulations in the UAE, they're quite different and I would say a little bit more lenient towards modifications. So that way we are able to get these cars out, you know, thanks to Sharjah Old Car Club and a couple other people that are supporting us uh, to be able to put these on the road. When it comes to all the extra, the, the new work that we're doing around commercial vehicles, we've been working with the government quite, quite closely to then bring those into regulation so that we can offer kits at a great price point. So we're, we're planning to do, you know, these kits around $20,000 uh, and up. 
for commercial vehicles so that you can have a cost-effective solution to decarbonize those fleets. And we're working with RTA and a couple other people to then bring that into fruition. If you look at total cost of ownership, actually, electric vehicles start making a lot more sense. The problem is when you look at new electric vehicles for commercial applications, so you're talking about vans and stuff, a lot of the times the discrepancy in price is so high, you have, uh, for example, a van that, um, like a French company that's come out here, costs about two or maybe three times the cost of a brand new van. So you're not going to be able to cover that cost of ownership even if you're driving the car for five years. What we come in and we say is that, well, at the price that's competitive to a new petrol car, we can convert your existing one to EV and you will have cost savings almost immediately. We uh, first we start with analy analyzing the, the vehicle because that's, I, I could say that's uh, uh, the biggest part of uh, the conversion where you have to see how the car was built, what, what, what was the weight distribution on the car, how the components was placed, what are the weight of the components, and then see what power train can be put on that vehicle. And of course, this takes a, a bit of time, because uh, especially if it's a new car that we haven't worked with, it, it takes a bit of time to do the research and development. And then, of course, uh, see what, where are the mounting points and start building the actual conversion. Usually, I think a conversion that's a bit more complicated can, can start from the six month time frame. And uh, when we've done work on the same kind of systems before, we're trying to bring that down to as little as three months. What we're planning to do more and more is to try to develop kits for vehicles that we already have worked with before and try to familiar, have some familiar models. And in that case, what we're aiming to do is to micro-manufacture those kits ready for somebody that wants to convert them. And then, if somebody brings the car in, essentially in a matter of three hours, we can swap that petrol engine to electric and have them out of the door. We've been looking at uh, and serving the entire Middle East region. In fact, we have a couple of customers already uh, from a couple of parts of the GCC and the Middle East. And we're looking now to uh, expanding in Africa as well to be able to decarbonize a lot of the taxis, what they call Bora Boras, um, and a lot of other specific you know, goods transport vehicles in Africa as well. So our real aim is to kind of become this EMEA-focused company uh, doing hundreds and hopefully thousands of kits that people can just use to quickly swap their cars so that they can move to zero emissions mobility. So we're, we're currently looking at a safe round uh, for, for 1.75 million US dollars to be able to expand and grow this kit market and to be able to develop retrofit kits that are not only uh, ready for the end consumer as a certified, but also then to have a network of installers across the region so that they can then service their end customers. Our uh, goal during the COP28 is to raise awareness on uh, electric conversions. Yes, when you, people are talking about uh, electric vehicles, they first think uh, about, hey, Tesla, or uh, as you said, Lucid, or Rivian, or, but there is this alternative for people that can't right now buy a Tesla, can't right now buy a, or maybe they want something, um, I would say, a bit different. Like I said, you can't, you can't buy an electric convertible at this point, or it's very hard to get a um, uh, four by four electric. It, this is where we come in and other companies like us, where we offer this possibility to, ha to bring yesterday's effort into today's uh, technology.